I said to myself I would never make this video. Why am I making it then? I think I've got to a point in life where like, I just, I don't care anymore. Recently, weirdly, I've had a lot of people messaging me on Instagram and stuff saying, you're so brave for putting yourself out there and being so honest and open with everyone. Here's the thing, I do put myself out there a lot more on Instagram than I do on YouTube actually, but I do have boundaries. I feel it's important to clarify that. There is shit you guys don't know. I'm not always like, that. But here's the thing, in life, I'm very open and honest with everyone anyway, with or without social media. So it just kind of comes second nature to me to be that honest, you know? Anyway, on that note, I'm sure you're all buzzing to know what this video is all about. So I've always been into men, always. Men, men, men. And I never ever fancied a girl in all my teenage, whatever, growing up life. Anyway, so about seven years ago, I met this girl through work. I was very aware I felt differently about. I didn't know at first, I, I we got on really well and I really liked her as a person. And then we hung out a lot and we spoke a lot outside of work. And I realized that whenever I was seeing her, I was very, um, I was really trying to look nice all the time. And I was very aware I was making more of an effort whenever I saw her. And suddenly I was like, fuck, I am a lesbian. So I went to my sisters and said, guys, I'm a lesbian. What am I gonna do? Oh my God, I'm gonna have to tell mum and dad. I'm gonna have to tell mum and dad I'm a lesbian. I'm gay, ah. Now just to clarify, before anyone gets carried away, there is nothing wrong with being gay. But that all very much took me by surprise and I just went to this crazy conclusion that I was just gay. But I just want to clarify, there's nothing wrong with being gay before any twatty keyboard warriors decide to say, oh, she's homophobic, fuck off. <sighs> okay, now I can carry on. My sisters calmed me down. <laughs> I said, Emily, you're not a lesbian. You just have a girl crush. Because the thing was, I'd never had a girl crush before that. I wanted to hang around with her all the time and talk to her all the time, but I didn't want to rip her clothes off. And I was aware of that. Because you kind of go through things in your head. I thought, I thought of this naked in bed and I thought, how does that make me feel? And it, it did not excite me. But it was still very confusing because I really liked her more than any other girl I'd ever met. I find it a very confusing time actually. Anyway, to cut a long story short, that all fizzled out. We just didn't, we stopped speaking. Then we just drifted apart. Well. I carried on with life, I had boyfriends, I was back to the nook. <laughs> and then somewhere along the way, I kept getting these like small girl crushes. Girls that I kept meeting that, again, it was less about wanting to rip their clothes off, more about wanting to be around them all the time. I couldn't work out if it was because I was just very, I really admired them. They all had very similar personalities. They were all very confident, quite popular, very socially great. That sounds weird. They were very talented in a certain era. Like they had a really good skill. And I found that very attractive. So did I aspire to be like them? And that's why I was kind of quite obsessed with them. Or was I genuinely attracted to them? I think that was what I couldn't work out. So then, about two years ago, I met a girl. One of my friends was having an event and I met this girl. She was gay. And as soon as I saw her, there was definitely, there was a vibe. You know when there's not a vibe, you know when there's a vibe. There was a vibe. There was a vibe. In the eyes. A lot of eye fucking going on. She had a girlfriend who was there that night. So that was all it was, very harmless eye flirting. And then we didn't actually end up speaking. Well, we weren't friends, so we didn't really know each other. So then a year later, I went to my friend's birthday and she was there and she was a single. Da, da, da. <laughs> and there was so much flirting that night. Like flirting was everywhere. And I think I thought, I could go home now, but then I thought this might be the only time in my life that I get to kind of work out who I am, what this is, push my boundaries. And I actually feel like that might be my only chance to do that. So I stayed. We ended up snogging 
outside <laughs> this bar. It doesn't sound like a big deal, I think, to some people, but it was a huge deal to me. I'd never ever snogged a girl that I had a thing for before. It was always like, you know, you'd snog your best friend because a guy wanted to buy you a drink, sure. But this felt different, it meant more. And so that was big, that was a big thing for me, big. As I was kissing her, there was just like, part of me that was like. Now after that night, we saw each other a few more times. And on the last time we hung out together, um, she stayed in my bed. We did stuff, not that stuff, but stuff. And that was terrifying and very exciting in equal measures. Perhaps a little more terrifying than exciting. I was very aware she had boobs. And when you're not used to being naked in bed with someone that has boobs, it's very strange. She was smaller than me. I felt like I had to be the man. I'm not obviously used to being that figure. It was, it was very, it was very different, obviously. So it didn't feel overly natural for me. But maybe that's normal. Maybe that's normal. I really don't know. I don't know that much about this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that is, that is my point. Another long story cut short, she ended up moving abroad, which was totally fine because really we had worked out that we were very different um, personality wise and we clashed on a lot of areas. So it was very mutually, totally fine. We just, she moved abroad and we still speak occasionally and it's fine. I think when I was younger, I really thought sexuality was very black and white. You're gay or you're straight. But as I grow up, and obviously the world's changed now, more people are talking about bisexuality and all that kind of stuff and sexuality, which is amazing. It kind of makes me believe you don't need to be labelled, unless you want to be labelled, of course. But I am, you know, I am just me. When I go out, I look for men and I think about men more than I think about women. I don't really ever think about women. It's just that I keep somehow meeting certain women in my life that I feel differently about than other girls and that's what's a bit conf it, oh, it's, it's not confusing it doesn't stress me out confusing because I I just accept who I am now but it's odd that that keeps happening to me I'm basically now I'm, I'm open to literally anything I'm not ruling anything out I'm not ruling anyone out so whereas before it would really freak me out it doesn't now and I think the last girl was so interesting because before it was all about the personalities um, of the girls that I kind of had crushes on, but this one was on a physical level purely. And that, that, that was very strange. Even thinking about it now, I find that strange. That is what it was. You just don't know who you meet and you, you sometimes don't know who gives you the feeling. That's why people are like, oh, who's your type? You know, who can I set you up with? I'm like, I really don't know. I don't know who my type is. I just know when I know, and I know when it's a no, you know. I think it's a really interesting topic for discussion, actually, and one that I'm interested to know what people think. So thanks for listening. I think it's been a long video. As I said at the beginning, I really was never, ever, ever going to make this video, but then I realized by doing that, I was making a bigger deal out of it than it is. And in the words of Kiala Settle, from the greatest showman, this is me.